Hey, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Hopefully the, the little mini lab went all right. Again, send me any questions you might have. Um, today we continue on with electric circuits a bit. Um, they're not too bad. Uh, just a quick reminder before we get going. This equation up here is Ohm's law. It expresses the relationship between the pressure or voltage or electric potential in a circuit, circuit uh, the current, that's the rate of flow of charge in a circuit, and the resistance or the opposition to the flow of charge measured in ohms, um, which we call resistance. So electrical pressure, electrical potential measured in volts, electrical resistance measured in ohms, electrical current, rate of flow of charge measured in amps. So the question is, what's the current in the following circuit? And it's a pretty plug and chug problem, if you notice real quick here. Yeah, the potential in this case, the voltage is 1.5 volts. The resistance, 1.5 ohms. Remember, capital omega is the abbreviation for ohms. Um, so if you plug it in 1.5 over 0 0.5, you get the current in the circuit is 3 amps. And now the question is, is what direction does the current flow? Well, it's asking about conventional current. That means the way Ben Franklin would have drawn it. So we end up with 3 amps flowing out of the battery here and it goes to the light bulb, and then it comes out. It's still 3 amps over here because charge is still not created or is not, never created or destroyed. Um, so the current, the rate of flow of charge, the number of coulombs per second, stays the same at each point in the circuit and inside the battery. Again, remember, the battery doesn't actually make charge. It just pumps the, the charge through it. Just like a water pump doesn't make water, it just pumps or increases the pressure of the water. In this case, the battery increases the pressure of the charge or does work on the charge. Um, kind of working backwards in this case, uh, I'm moving now to, to the more symbolic symbols. Remember, this is the symbol for a battery, a bunch of cells put together. The long end here is positive. Um, in this case, in the resistor, I'm using the UK or Commonwealth way of drawing a resistor because that's what my software that we're using does. Um, I've got a 7 ohm resistor, a battery, and 3 amps of current flowing around, again, in conventional form. The question is, what's the voltage or electrical potential of this battery? In other words, what is this potential? And you can very quickly take this equation right here and solve for voltage. Voltage is going to be equal to I times R, or in this case, that's going to be equal to the current 3 times 7. And we very quickly can figure out, oh, this must be a 21 volt battery, or the electrical potential is 21 volts. Okay? Um, what happens if you put more than one battery in the circuit? Now, at first you might say, oh my goodness, this is impossible. But remember, think about these batteries as being water pumps. In this case, this one's increasing the pressure by 6 joules per coulomb, or 6 volts. And this one's also increasing it, trying to pump charge around the circuit this way. And it increases it by 10 joules per coulomb, or 10 volts. If they're both trying to push charge in the same direction, and they're one after another, what do you do with these battery voltages? Well, if you remember from that little battery diagram I did a little while ago, in a couple, or in yesterday's, well, the day before that video, you simply add them. So what's the total potential of these two batteries in series, both trying to pump charge in the same direction? This acts as if it is a 16 volt battery. So what's the current in this circuit? It's gonna be this total potential change of 16 volts, I'll write out the units here, over two ohms, or you'll work out that this must be eight amps. And yes, eight amps is flowing through this portion right here. Yes, it's flowing out over here. Yes, it's flowing back over here. Um, it's 8 amps at every single point in the circuit. Um, for those of you who are thinking, oh, uh, well, let's save that thought for a little bit. What's the current in this circuit? And you're like, well, wait a second. You put the resistor between the batteries. Yeah, but take a look at the batteries themselves. This one's still trying to pump charge this way. This one's still trying to pump charge this way as well. They're both trying to pump it anti-clockwise or counterclockwise around this circuit. They're still working together. 
So what's the total potential? In this case, this 10 volts followed by the 6 volt, it's still 16 volts of electrical potential. Um, the resistance is still 2 ohms, and so the current in this one is still going to be 8 amps. Um, there's 8 amps flowing at each point in this circuit, including through the resistor and through each one of the batteries. And you're like, okay, I got it. And so you're like, wait, wait, you forgot to change the slide. Well, take another close look. In this case, this battery is trying to push charge this way. This one, if you notice the positive tip is over here, is trying to push charge this way. Now, if these two batteries had were equally rated pumps or had the same pressure, there'd be absolutely no charge flowing around in this circuit. But in this case, this battery generates a greater p electrical potential, a greater pressure than this one does. How do you figure out the total p electrical potential in this circuit? Well, this one's trying to push things around clockwise. This one's trying to push things around, oh, sorry, this one's trying to push around clockwise. This one's trying to push around counterclockwise, anticlockwise. Uh, which one wins? This one. But what's the net electrical potential in this circuit? In this case, it's the difference between these two. And if we solve it, we're going to end up with 10 minus 6 over the resistance 2. And what's the current going to be in this circuit? Well, 4 over 2, or 2 amps. Which direction? Well, because this is the stronger pump, the analogy there, or generates a greater potential, um, the, this one's going to win over this one, and we'll be forcing 2 amps around the circuit this way at every single point, including between the batteries, over, or be, between the batteries and the resistor. Um, what is this doing? Uh, just a quick note on this one. You're like, wait, it's forcing current into this battery. Yeah, instead of discharging, this battery, the 6-volt battery here is actually charging. Um, <laughs> instead of discharging the way it normally does, there's charge being pushed into it, and it's actually gaining charge. Um, electrical power. You, I wrote these out both in words uh, just for a second. Remember, current is defined as the rate of change of charge over time. And electrical potential is the amount of energy per unit charge. Mathematically, we usually do in variables. Current is the rate of change of charge for, uh, char charge for a point of circuit, delta Q, over the change in time, delta T. And electrical potential is just the change in the work done on the charge work done per unit charge. So what do you get when you multiply current by voltage? Well, if you take a look at these two equations, look what happens. Uh, current, which is charge over time, and voltage, which is, uh, sorry, my pen's not working very well, which is work over time, this part right, or sorry, work over charge. Notice that the delta Q's charge cancel, and you get work over time which you might remember is the definition of power. So current times voltage gives you electrical power, and you might remember power is measured in watts, joules per second. If you use Ohm's law, I equals V over R, you can do some fun substitutions. Let me quick show you. So we know power is equal to current times voltage. You can replace the I here with V over R, so you get V over R times V, or V squared over R. It's another equation for electrical power. Or if you replace V with I times R, you'll get I squared R. All three of these are equations for electrical power measured in watts. Which one's the right one? The answer is, oh, that depends which, which constants you happen to know. Let me give you a quick example. Um, you're probably watching this on your, on your laptop. Not a guarantee, but possible. It could be your phone as well. But a lot of the Mac chargers are rated for 60 watts. You can either read the side of the, the charger down here. It'll actually tell you what it is. Or you can actually go on your, your About My Machine thing and look on it, and you'll see the power listed of the adapter that's connected to. Um, mine, I was going to take a picture of it and stick it in here, but it's so faded from all the wear, I, you couldn't get a decent shot of it. So the question is, my question is, what current does it draw? 
if it's plugged into a 220 volt outlet. And literally just using, in this case, I'm, I know the power, I know the voltage, I'm looking for the current I. I'm just gonna use this form of it. Plugging in our numbers, you'll get the current is a relatively small 0.273 amps. And you might say, is that relatively small? Well, not really small. But if you think about it, and I don't know, we'll get to this a little bit later, um, a typical uh, set of outlets in your home are connected to a circuit breaker that limits the amount of current in that particular circuit to usually about 15 or 20 amps. What does that mean? It means you could plug in quite a few of these before you get up to that 15 amp maximum current that the circuit breakers allow. Um, I can't quite do the math in my head. Let's just call that a quarter of an amp. In that case, you could actually plug in 60 uh, MacBook charges <laughs> in one circuit without tripping the circuit breaker, which is a lot. Not quite that many, but close. Uh, here's another example. What's the power dissipated? Um, typically, that means how much heat it's being produced by this resistor. This resistor is going to end, end up as a perfect um, heat generating thing. By the way, that's the one conversion that is pretty close to 100% efficient. Converting anything into heat <laughs> is terribly efficient. Uh, remember, everything ends up as heat, so basically it's 100% efficient. In this case, what equation would I want to use? Probably V squared over R. Why? Because I know the voltage and I know the resistance, and I'm looking for the power. So in this case, plugging it in, um, just V squared over R, 16 squared over 2, and I hope I did my math right. I did this in my head. I, I think it's right. I think it's 256 over 2. It should be 128 watts. That's a lot of heat, actually. It's a pretty decent heater. Um, real quick note about electrical power and energy. Remember, electrical power can be defined by any of these three things. Um, your apartment, villa, or house is actually charged by the number of kilowatt hours it uses each month. The question I have for you, is this a unit of power or energy? And yeah, if you notice on top, you'll see it's kilowatt hours that it's measuring. Think about it for a brief moment. And remember that power is equal to the amount of energy per unit time. or power times time, I've got my eye, is equal to energy. If you haven't already figured it out, I've got kilowatts, which is a unit of power, times hours, which is a unit of time. What are they charging you for each month? It's the total amount of energy you use. A kilowatt hour is a unit of energy, just like the joule, but a little bit larger. How much larger? Well, a kilowatt is a thousand watts times the time. An hour is 3,600 seconds. So a kilowatt hour is 3,600,000 joules, which is a, a lot of energy. Uh, believe it or not. And I at least here in Shanghai at the moment, one kilowatt hour or this amount of energy, electrical energy, is only about um, one, oh, I'm not quite exactly sure of it, about one-fourth of a renminbi, depending on what the rate is and how much power you use or energy you use each month. It's still crazy cheap. Um, that's a lot of energy. You could work out... Um, that, yeah, you could use this to power your, your MacBook for, oh, good gracious. Uh, let's see. So, um, <laughs> um, 60,000 seconds or 1,000 minutes or quite a few hours. <laughs> All right, quick review. I'm going to go buy this one because most of you remember it. Uh, voltage or electrical potential is the electrical equivalent of a resistance, or sorry, pressure measured in volts or joules per coulomb. Current, electrical equivalent of flow measured in amps or amperes or coulombs per second. Resistance, the opposition to the flow of charge measured in ohms. And I think I've asked you this question before, does a voltage or pressure always create a flow of charge? The answer is no. 
If the resistance is large enough, there'll be no current. So if R is very large, approaching infinity, um, the current will approach zero. Uh, officially, we move into chapter 18, which is direct current circuits. We've already done this already, um, but now I can actually ask you one more question. If you remember this one, oh, actually, it's a little bit different. Uh, what's the current for the resistor? What's the voltage drop? What's the power? Um, in this case, the current in this circuit is going to be 1.5 over 1 or 1.5 amps. So 1.5 amps is going to leave the battery. That's the rate of flow of current. And it's going to flow around here at every single point as well. Um, what's the voltage drop across this lamp? Well, if you take Ohm's law, which I don't have written here, but let me write it up here real quick. I is equal to V over R. Uh, you can calculate voltage drop by rearranging this equation. It's I times R. So, and usually write it as voltage drop, the change in the voltage or change in electrical potential. What's the change in voltage across that lamp? I'm going to switch colors real quick here. Um, the voltage drop across this lamp is going to be equal to I times R. In this case, the current we know is 1.5 amps. The resistance is 1, and so we get a change of voltage, change of electrical potential, of 1.5 volts. Yes, I realize I've got V here is the abbreviation of electrical potential, and this V is the abbreviation of the unit of electrical potential, volts. Don't let that stress you out. Um, and finally, what's the power in this circuit? Well, if you take a look at this, let me pick a different color. Um, we can use any of the equations you'd like to use here. I'm just going to use power is equal to um, V squared over R. So in this case, um, the voltage or the power output of this light bulb would be 1.5 squared over 2. And if I'm doing my math right in my head, please forgive me if this is wrong, 2.25 watts should be the power output of this light bulb. Um, which is kind of interesting. Um, I hope I get my math right. 15 squared should be 225. Uh, whoops. Divided by, that should be 1. Did I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that should be, I think I did that right. Maybe not. Eh, it's close enough. It should be about right. Sorry. Um, what happens if you have, we've talked about what happens if you have multiple batteries in the same circuit. What if you have multiple resistances? Well, it's a pretty simple thing in this case. This resistor opposes the flow of current in either direction. This one opposes the flow of current in either direction. What if you put one after another? It opposes even more. Um, we've talked before of like a, a soda straw as having some resistance to the flow of a drink. If you put two soda straws one after another, it gets harder to drink the drink, even without an air link in it. Um, so as you put more straws in series, it gets more difficult. Uh, mathematically, it's incredibly simple. The total resistance is just equal to the sum of each of the individual resistors added together. And the current for each one of these has to be the same because yeah, there's just no way around it. Here's an AP question, and it's leading us into something that we haven't talked about yet, and that's this. Um, We've got two resistors. R1 is 200 ohms. Oops, let me get that writing. Is 200 ohms. Um, R2 is 400 ohms. And then here's the new part we haven't quite talked about yet. This battery, this dotted line represents the outline of the battery, has an internal resistance of 10 ohms. And I need to talk about that real quick. Um, all batteries have some internal resistance that grows, gets larger as the battery ages. And so, yeah, hold tight for this think, thought for just a brief moment before we answer this question. Um, let's say that, oh, they actually tell us in this case, okay, what's the relationship between the three level currents? Okay, well, that's all right. Um, well, let's see, 600, oh, that's an ugly number. Uh, remember that the battery voltage depends only on the electronic, or the difference in electron affinity between the two metals that make it up. 
that never changes, even as the battery ages. Why? Because we're still dealing with the two different kinds of metals. So the question I have then is, why do batteries ever go dead? You've all had batteries go dead on you. Well, what's going on? Um, in reality, the electric potential stays the same, but inside the battery, let's say you've got a piece of zinc and a piece of copper stuck into a lemon or a potato. Um, to transfer electrons from one plate to the other, you've got chemical reactions going on between the metals and the electrolyte. Could be the lemon juice, could be the potato starch, um, or the liquid in the or the salt water in the potato, or it could be a container of salt water, or or the skin of your two fingers if you're holding the two pieces of metal in your hand. Those are producing those chemical reactions. For those of you in AP Chem, redox and oxidation reaction or reduction and oxidation or redox reactions are forming salts on both of those. Could be copper chloride, copper hydroxide, zinc hydroxide, zinc chloride. All depends which way the reaction's going. But those salts um, are not great conductors. They're insulators. And so what happens as a battery goes or ages, it's not that the metals start, stop producing potential. It's that the salts that are produced on these two plates increase the internal resistance of the battery. Remember I told you every battery has some internal resistance? When it's new, that internal resistance is very small, maybe a tenth of an ohm. And it's only equal to the resistance of the electrolyte, uh, the ion solution you have between the two plates. But as it ages, this re internal resistance gets larger because of the resistance of the salts that form on these two plates. Um, how do rechargeable batteries work? Well, the chemical reactions that produce the salts on these two plates are reversible that if you force current backwards through these, you undo the re reduction and oxidation reactions that form the salts and form metal, the original metals back again, which is how you recharge the battery, and that reduces the internal resistance again. Last thing, I'm sorry this is taking so long. If you're ever stuck in a desert island and all you've got is a non-rechargeable battery and it's gone dead and you need to use your, your laptop or your computer or your cell phone, uh, what could you do in a really desperate situation? You could very carefully open it up, scratch off the salts that formed on um, both of the electrodes, carefully put it back together again, and believe it or not, it would actually still work uh, <laughs> within some limitations. I wouldn't do it with a lithium ion battery for, certain, or for reasons that lithium is so reactive, but for standard batteries, it would actually work. You couldn't do it forever because eventually you run out of the two metals because they do eventually form salts, but it would work for a bit. All right, sorry, I haven't answered this question, though, believe it or not. What's going to be the current for each one of these resistors? The answer is, is that the current through this resistor has to be the same as the current through this resistor, which has to be the same as the current through this resistor. Why? Current's not created or destroyed at any point in the circuit. The currents all have to be the same. I1, I2, and the current through the battery, and including for the internal resistor, has to be all the same. Um, the amount of potential loss we've already talked about can be calculated by rearranging Ohm's law. The voltage drop across any resistor is just equal to the current for the resistor times its resistance, which allows us now to do some really creative things. So let's say I define that this point in the circuit zero volts. Uh, one way of doing that is saying I've connected it to the earth. What do we do then? Well, when I go through this battery, it increases the electrical potential of the pressure by 12 volts. How do I know that? That's what its rating is over here. Now, before I can figure out the voltage drops around the circuit, I first of all have to figure out what in the world is the current in the circuit. Well, I have three resistors in series, a 1 ohm, a 2 ohm, and a 3 ohm. What's their total resistance? Well, remember in series, you just add them up. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6 ohms. So what's the current in the circuit if the total resistance is 6 ohms? Well, we just have 12 volt battery, 12 volt potential over total of 6. Uh, the current in the circuit is going to be 2 amps. So there's going to be 2 amps leaving for the, from the battery. So there'll be 2 amps flowing through this one, 2 amps flowing through this one, and 2 amps flowing through this one. I could draw it on the wires as well, but I'm going to draw it here. But now we can actually solve some interesting things. 
Remember this voltage drop equation right here? What's the voltage drop across this resistor? Well, the voltage drop is going to be, or the change of potential, either way of saying it, is 2 times 1, or 2 volts. What does that mean? That means I'm going to lose this much electrical potential when my current flows through this resistor. If I was at 12 volts here, and by the way, I'd still be at 12 volts right before this, afterwards, what am I going to be at? I'm going to be at 10 volts. I'm going to lose 2 volts of potential. I'll still be at 10 volts here. I'd still be at 10 volts right before I go through this resistor. What's the voltage drop through this resistor? Uh, most of you can see it real quick. It's going to be 4 volts. Which means right after I go for this, I'm going to lose 4 volts, which means I'm going to be down to 6 volts. Still at 6 volts here, there's no resistance. We assume wires have no resistance, so there'd be no voltage drop. 6 volts right before this one. Voltage drop across this one, most of you can see it already, is going to be 3 times 2, or 6 volts. Hey! I'm back down to zero volts, which takes me all the way back around the loop. Yeah, in every single case, this will be true. You're going to lose all the potential that the battery gave you. Now, you might say, wait, what would happen if you didn't? Well, you'd run into an interesting problem. Let's say, for example, that I ended up at two volts here after I went through this resistor. Now this would be two volts. I'd gain 12. I'd be at 14. And now when I got back around here, I'd be at four volts which I would now gain, and I go 16. And you can see I'd run into the super runaway very quickly where this would actually, the voltage in the circuit would just go to infinity. Not cool. It doesn't actually matter where you put the zero voltage point. You'll still get the same result. Let me show you what I mean. What if I define the zero point there? Well, in this case, the current in the circuit is still going to be 2 amps. Why? Because the potential is still 12 volts and my total resistance is still 6 ohms. But now what happens here? Well, my voltage drop across this resistor is 6 volts. But again, currents go around this way. So I go from 0 volts, I lose 6. And so by the time I'm over here, I'm at negative 6 volts. You're like, can you have negative potential? Yep. Just like you have negative velocity, you can have negative potential. Not that the V in this case means velocity. Don't get confused. Um, in this case, the battery then increases it by 12. So where am I at after that? Well, negative 6 plus 12 gives me 6 volts. And then I go for this resistor. The voltage drop here is 2 volts, which means over here I'm at 4 volts. And then what's the voltage drop across here? Oh, 4 volts. Oh, sure enough, it gets me back to 0 volts. It's consistent. Um, all the voltage gains have to equal the voltage drops, no matter where you start from or where you define your zero point. So I mentioned before, all real batteries have some built-in internal resistance that increases as the battery is used up. If this battery has an internal resistance of 0.1 ohms, what would be the current in this circuit now? If you solve this one real quick, how would you solve it? You'd have to pretend that there inside of this is, it's like it has another resistor along with a battery, which I can't draw on black on very well, that's 0 0.1 ohms. So solving the current in the circuit right now, it would be V over R, or in this case, 1.5 over the total resistance, which is going to be 1 plus 0.1, or 1.1 1 .1 ohms. Grabbing your calculator, uh, grabbing mine, 1.5 divided by 1.1, oh, shoot. Sorry, my calculator wasn't ready for me. Um, I get the current in the circuit is about 1.36 amps. Without the internal resistance, remember the first one we'd slide we did of chapter 18, we did this circuit, it was 1.5 amps. With internal resistance, this gets smaller. And what happens to our light bulb? There's less current flowing through it. And if you calculate the electrical power dissipated by it, you'll discover that it is not producing as much light as it was before. Um, the light bulb gets dimmer. Oh, this is to remind me to switch. Um, I just want to show you um, the simulation I gave you before. There's an option over here, whoops, which I'm kind of cutting off. I don't know if I can fix this real quick for you. Give me a second here. I may try creativeness. There we go. Um, there's an option here where you can actually give wires resistivity. Don't do that. But you can also do battery resistance. Um, 
and you can vary it. it. By default, it's zero ohms. Oh, by the way, I've switched here to the symbol mode. So that my battery now shows up as a battery symbol, my light bulb like that. Um, and you can also uh, put values on there. So you can see in this case, my battery right now is at zero volts and my lamp's at 0.1. So let me click on that real quick and give my battery uh, 10 volts. And sure enough, you can see that, yep, there's one amp of current for the circuit. The voltage drop across the light bulb is 10 volts. Okay, let's go ahead and give our battery some internal resistance. If I give it one ohm, now notice that my current's smaller and my voltage drop is smaller. Um, and sure enough, uh, if you measured it here, if I hook, I guess I, oh, I don't have another voltmeter. I guess I can move this one over here real quick. If I move the voltmeter over here, the terminals on my battery would only show 9.09 .09 as well. Why? Because I'm losing a little bit of voltage across this internal resistance. So you get some strange effects. And as I up the internal resistance, notice what happens to the current in the, in the circuit. It gets smaller and smaller. If I take the battery resistance all the way up to 10 ohms, um, my currents drop down to this, and my, my voltage drop across my light bulb is only 5 volts. But the terminal voltage of my battery is also now only 5 volts. Why? Because I'm losing 5 volts across this internal resistor. Uh, 10 ohms times the current in the circuit, 0 0.5, means inside the battery I'm losing 5 volts. Delta V is equal to IR, 5 volts. And so my battery uh, readings I'm getting at those terminals are only 5 volts. I'm only losing 5 volts here. And my battery, or my light bulb is getting very dim. All right. So here's another classic AP kind of question. Uh, first question, what's the total resistance of the circuit? What are the voltages at each point in the circuit? What electrical potential difference would you read between points A and B? In other words, if you connected a voltmeter there, sort of like what we just did. Well, first of all, here's our battery. If you haven't quite seen it yet, it's this piece right here. It's this gray shaded area. And what we've got is a battery that has uh, electrical potential of 12 volts. But it's already worn down a bit, so it's got an internal resistance of 2 ohms. To it, we've connected an external resistor of 4 ohms. What's the total resistance of this circuit? You should sort of say, oh yeah, it's 2 plus 4 or 6 ohms. And now, what's the current in the circuit? Because this circuit has a total resistance of 6 ohms, the current in it is going to be 2 amps. In other words, there's going to be two amps of current flowing through here and two amps flowing down through this one. And yeah, there's two amps flowing through each one of these two wires. I didn't want to draw them at every single point, but you kind of get it. The question is then, uh, what are the electrical potentials you would get at each point in the circuit? Let me switch to a different color so it's not so horrible. So we've got zero volts here. Um, after we go through the battery, we'd be at 12 volts. But, oh, by the way, here at, at this, we'd be also at zero volts yet. We haven't changed from here to here. By here, going through the battery, we're at 12. The voltage drop for this resistor, 2 times 2, I times R, would be 4 volts. So if the voltage change is 4 volts, that's really badly drawn. I was at 12. I lose 4. What am I at B here? I'm going to be at 8 volts. And let me quick answer this last question here. What potential difference would you read between A and B? If you hooked up a voltmeter, I kind of draw it like this, voltmeters are represented with a V, whoops, and hooked it up between these, what potential difference would it read? It would read zero, the difference here is zero and eight. It would read eight volts, which is the answer to this question. But let's do the rest of this one. What's the voltage as you point in the circuit? We're at eight volts here, still at eight volts here, still at eight volts here. Still at 8 volts here. I'm kind of drawing too many of these. Voltage drop across this resistor is going to be I times R, which in this case is, as you would have guessed, 8 volts, which means I'm down to 0 volts here, 0 volts here, and we're back around to where we were. So the terminal of this battery, when it's connected to a load like this, would read 8 volts. Um, even though it, it has an e or internal electrical potential of 12 volts due to the differences in metals, um, the internal resistance has a voltage drop, so we read a smaller voltage. Ooh, a brain break, finally! The famous trios below have had their vowels, including Y, removed from their names. Can you figure out who and what they are 
they are in the form of x, x, and x. Okay, okay, I got the first one, easy one. This one's morning, noon, and night. Oh, I got. I think I got the second one. But I'm going to do a countdown. Take a pause for a break. Your brain needs a, a break from the physics. I'll do a countdown and then show you the answers in five, four, three, two, one. Lock, stock, and barrel is an old phrase which you might not know. Past, present, and future. Reading, writing, and arithmetic, the basics. Stop, look, and listen. They used to tell you that before you cross the road. Bacon, lettuce, and tomato. Ah, that's one I couldn't get. Nina, Pinta, and Santa Maria. I it was also one my, I couldn't figure out. And then finally, me, myself, and I. I couldn't figure that one out because I couldn't figure out what the last one was. All right. Um, so let's now play with a little bit on this one. What if we have multiple resistors? Um, so let's go solve this one real quick. What's the total resistance of the circuit? As you can very quickly see, that's going to be 6 ohms, just the sum of those two. And the current in the circuit, forgive me if I still write this out, is going to be 12 volts over the total resistance 6 uh, or 2 amps. And what's the voltage drop across each resistor? All right. Um, I always like trying to, I usually make the negative terminal of the battery the zero point. I'm going to make that zero volts. After I go for the battery, I'm going to be at 12 volts. I'm not going to draw at every single point in the circuit, but I'll draw at each corner. Here it's 12 volts. If I have two amps flowing through this resistor, and by the way, there's going to be two amps flowing through this resistor as well. This is from the answer we got up here. Um, what's the voltage drop across this one? Well, the voltage drop is going to be 4 volts, which means after I go for the resistor, I'm going to go from 12, lose 4. I'm going to be at 8 volts here. And what's the voltage drop across this resistor? It's going to be I times R, um, which again is going to be 8 volts. So after I go through this one, I'm going to be back at 0 volts, which makes sense. By the way, please ignore the little tiny red bar graphs here. My software package actually draws a little bar graph here that shows you the potential in the circuit at each point. Notice it's 12 volts, 12 volts. This is supposed to be a little shorter right here. Actually, it doesn't look it. Um, this one's a little shorter, and then it's zero over here and zero there. Uh, what's the current through and the voltage drop across each of these resistors? Um, in this case, very quickly, you're going to need to figure out the total resistance of the circuit, which is 2 plus 2, or 4 ohms. The current in the circuit is going to be 16 volts over 4 ohms, or 4 amps. I'm not going to draw at every single point, but if there's 4 amps flowing through this one and 4 amps flowing through this one, um, the voltage drops across each one of these are going to be 8 volts, I times R. So 4 times 2. Um, voltage drop across this one, also going to be 8 volts. Um, and so we already solved it. The current through each and the, vol and the voltage drop across each is there. If you take a look at the circuit again, if I make this 0 volts, 16 volts, still 16 volts. Voltage drop of 8 volts, so I'm down to 8 volts here. Voltage drop of 8, I'm down to 0 volts here. It always works. What about this one? Oh, man, it's getting a little bit ugly. Um, total resistance here, 2 plus 4, 6, plus that is 3. Um, can you see that the current here is going to be 36 over 9 or 4 amps? So solving this one real quick, there's 4 amps flowing through this resistor, 4 amps flowing through this resistor, 4 amps flowing through this resistor. And if I did the potentials really quick, um, I'd be at 36 volts here. Voltage drop across this one would be 8. So I'd be down to 28 volts here. Voltage drop across this one would be 16, which puts me at 12 volts here. The voltage drop here is 12 volts, which puts me at 0 volts here. And yeah, it all makes sense again. We already know when you put resistors in series, you just add them up. The example we just did there, that was equal to 9 ohms. But what happens when you put them side by side? Um, in this case, remember what happens if you put, this is like putting pipes one after another. You just, it increases the resistance because now the stuff has to flow through both of them. But what happens if you put pipes side by side? What happens to the resistance of the flow? It actually gets easier. 
Um, and so the relationship here is pretty simple. If you have resistors in series, you just add them all up. If they're in parallel, the formula is a little bit more complex. 1 over the total resistance of all the resistors in parallel is equal to 1 over the first resistor plus 1 over the second plus 1 over the third. And you're like, what? Okay, yeah. So 1 over the total resistance, I'll just call it R sub T, is equal to 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6. You've got to do common denominator. Um, so that becomes 2 sixths or 3 sixths. Now taking the reciprocal of that equation, I get RT is equal to 6 over 3 or 2 ohms. So these two together act as if they're a single 2 ohm resistance, which is smaller than either one of them. Why? Because now current can go either this way or it can go this way. It now has multiple paths of getting through. It's not forced to just go through one or the other. Even though each one of these has some resistance, by giving it multiple paths, it reduces the overall resistance of that part of the circuit. For resistors in series, the current through each resistor has to be the same. The current going through this one has to be the current going through this one has to be the current going through this one. But the voltage drops, which is equal to I times R, can be different. Why? Even though all these currents are the same, these are all I's, depending on the resistances, the voltage drops can change. For resistors in parallel, the voltage at this point in the circuit and the voltage at this point in the circuit, let's just make some numbers out. Let's say at this point it's 12 volts, at this point it's 6 volts. That means the voltage drop, no matter if the current goes through this resistor or this resistor, would have to have a voltage drop of 6 volts. I shouldn't have used 6 at the end there as well. Um, so the voltage drops have to be the same because it, it can't go through both resistors. Current has to go either through one or the other to get to this point. Um, but the current for each one of these wouldn't necessarily be the same. In this case, um, if I have a voltage drop of 6 volts and this is a 6 ohm resistor, I would have one amp of current going through this one. And if I got a 6 volt drop through this 3 ohm resistor, this one would have to have 2 amps going through it. All right, we're now down to it. Ready? What happens if you combine both of these together? You're like, no! Okay, it's not that bad. Uh, take a quick look at this. How do you solve something like this? Well, take a look at it. You've just got to do one part at a time. Um, and in this case, we start out with these two resistors in parallel. Um, how do you solve that, first of all? This together, remember, we just did this one a moment ago. Hopefully you remember it. A 3 ohm and a 6 ohm resistor in parallel is equivalent to 2 ohms. That then is in series with this 2 ohm resistor. What's the total resistance of this circuit? The total resistance of the entire circuit is just 4 ohms. And whenever you get a circuit like this, first thing to do is figure out the total resistance. Then you can figure out the current flowing out of the battery. And that's just going to be V over R, or R is the total resistance. And you can sort of see in this case that's going to be 3 amps. So that's 3 amps. And now, how do you figure out the current for all these? Well, at this point I would cheat a little bit and actually take a look at electrical potential. Um, so I'm at 0 volts here. I'm at 12 volts here. After going through the battery, we assume no internal resistance. And you might say, well, I don't know what the current is for these yet. You're absolutely right. Um, but there's one resistor which you do know. Let me explain. The 3 amps that we measured here comes into here, and part of it goes this way, and part of it goes this way. But over here, the currents recombine back together again. And so, believe it or not, you do know the current through this resistor down here. All 3 amps have to go through this one here, which means we can actually work out Remember, we have to end up at zero volts here. What's the voltage drop across this resistor? Well, the voltage drop has to be six volts, which means what was it here if I end up at zero down here? I must be at six volts here, which means this point here in the circuit's at 12 volts. This point here is at six volts. Remember, it's connected directly to that, 
which means I know what the voltage drop across either one of these res resistors has to be. If I go through this path, I go from 12 to 6, the voltage drop is 6 volts. If I go through this path, 12 to 6, my voltage drop is 6 volts. If I use delta V is equal to I times R, I'll figure out very quickly that this has to be 1 amp and this has to be 2 amps going through this resistor. And believe it or not, we've just solved uh, everything in this circuit. Yeah, I kind of consider it like, like circuit Sudoku. Um, you really just kind of play with it. Here's my last other circuit. And you might say, whoa, 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 whoa wait a second. Uh, how do you solve this one? Well, the same kind of thing again, except in this case, it's like working from math problem. We work in the inner parts, the inner parentheses. In this case, I would work on these two parts first. These two resistors are in series, which then is in parallel with this 6 ohms. Uh, what's these, what are these two in, in series? The answer is 6 ohms. And now, what's the total resistance of this circuit? The total resistance now is you've got 6 ohms in parallel with 6 ohms. Should I, I don't know if I should write it out real quick. Um, all right, so I get 1 over R total is equal to 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6. That's 2, 6, taking the reciprocal 6 over 2, or 3 ohms. What's going to be the current out of the battery? Well, 12 over 3. Uh, the total current out of the battery is going to be 4 amps. So now let me switch colors real quick, and we'll get going on it here. So there's 4 amps flowing out of the battery, and that's going to split. Part of it's going to go straight through this way, Part of it's going to go down through this circuit, and then down here, they're going to recombine. And you might say, well, wait a second. This time I don't know the current necessarily through any of these resistors. How can I solve this? Well, let me show you one quick nice thing. In this case, we can figure out we know the potential here is 12 volts if I define this at zero down here. And it's at 12 volts here. And it's at 12 volts here because I'm all in these wires which have no resistance. And by the time I get down to here, I have to be at zero volts. Which means, believe it or not, you can tell me immediately, you can't tell me the current through this resistor immediately, but you can tell me that the voltage drop for this resistor has to be 12 volts. Goes from 12 to zero. Which means now you can tell me the current through this resistor has to be two amps. Why? I times R, current two times the resistance six has to give me 12 volt drop. And now I can actually solve the rest of this. Why? Because this 4 amps, which can't be created or destroyed, we know 2 amps of it go this way, which means how much goes this way? This has to be 2 amps going down this way. So 2 amps is flowing, or is flowing here. 2 amps flows through this one. And now we can calculate the voltage drops. What's the voltage drop across this one? Well, I times R. 2 times that is 8 volts. That's, sorry, really drawn badly. So if I'm at 12 volts here, after I lose 8 volts, I'd be at 4 volts here. And then the voltage drop for this one, you can sort of see, you should sure guess already, is going to be 4 volts, I times R, 2 times 2, which puts me back at 0 volts. And congratulations, we just solved it. Whew! Sorry, that was a long lecture. Hopefully you kind of see it. Um, this is one of those lectures where you might need to watch it more than once. Uh, but this is the key part of, of resistors in series in parallel and complex circuits. Have a great night. Good luck with the homework. Ask me questions. And I hope to, or yeah, have a good weekend. I won't see you until next week. Talk to you soon. Bye.